We rarely end up with a function that's exactly f of x equals secant of x or f of x equals cosecant of x. Generally, there are some transformations involved, stretches or shifts, compressions or reflections. Because the graph of the secant and the cosecant are made based on sine and cosine graphs, our steps for the creation of these graphs is going to be a little bit different. When I want to graph a function of a secant or a cosecant function, the first thing that I do is replace the secant or cosecant with its reciprocal function. Switch secant for cosine in the formula, or switch cosecant for sine in the formula. Next, you want to sketch that sine or cosine graph, complete with all of its transformations. Only then can you draw your asymptotes in for this modified function. Keep in mind that when we are no longer con that we are no longer concerned with where the x-intercepts of the sine or cosine function are, because the graph may have shifted, which changes the midline. We want to draw asymptotes where the sine or cosine function crosses the midline. From there, it's all the same. From the maximums, draw parabolas up, bounded by the asymptotes. From minimums, draw parabolas down, bounded by, bounded by their asymptotes. Erase the sine or cosine we used to model for the graph or cosecant. Erase the sine or cosine we used to model for the secant or cosecant graph, and what remains will be your transformed cosecant or secant graph. Let's walk through an example. Suppose we're asked to sketch f of t equals three secant of pi over 4t minus 1. The first thing that we want to do then is replace the secant or cosecant with its reciprocal function. We have the secant which is 1 over the cosine so we are going to do f of t equals 3 cosine pi over 4t minus 1. Before I graph the cosine, I need to identify its primary elements. This is a positive cosine graph, so its shape is going to start at the maximum, go down to the minimum, and come back up again to make one period. The vertical stretch, or amplitude, here is the number in front of the cosine, 3. The vertical shift, or midline, is the number added or subtracted on the outside of the function, the negative one. Now we need to calculate the modified period. We use the value b located inside of the cosine function next to the variable. The new period is going to be 2 pi over b or in this case, 2 pi over pi over 4. Multiplying by the reciprocal of the complex fraction, I get 2 pi times 4 over pi. The pi's cancel, and after fully reducing, 
I find that my modified period is eight. Armed with this information, I'm ready to sketch my graph. Mark the midline at y equals negative one. Since the amplitude of my function is equal to three, then the cosine will start three above the midline. One, two, three. Which is the point zero, two. Now I need to draw a cosine function which, start, which starts at the maximum value of two and drops to the minimum value of negative four, negative two, negative three, negative four, which is three below the midline, and then comes back to that maximum of two over a period of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The minimum will occur halfway through the period at the point four, negative four. The graph will cross the midline at the, the halfway points at two negative one and at six negative one. I can then extend the graph by repeating this period. Now I'm ready to switch and start graphing the actual secant function. I put vertical asymptotes everywhere that the cosine crosses the midline. Then I draw parabola shapes extending up from the maximums of the cosine graph and down from the minimums of the cosine graph. Erase the cosine graph that was being used as the model. and what we're left with behind, and we're done. Now, suppose that instead of being given a formula, we are given a graph. Suppose we're given a graph and then are asked to identify the formula. Let's suppose we are given the following graph. I know from the asymptotic behavior and the repeating periodic upward and downward parabolas, I'm looking at either a modified secant or a modified cosecant graph. To determine which, we need to sketch in the sine or cosine graph that goes along with it. To do that, I just make a curve that bounces back and forth between the minimums and maximums of our parabola looking shapes. Now we just need to identify the formula for this modified sine or cosine graph, and then we can identify its reciprocal function. To start, I always like to, to sketch in the midline of my graph. I look, so let's see, high at three, low at negative one, midline should be right here. Then I look at the y-axis to determine if the y-intercept occurs at the midline, which would correlate with a sine graph, 
or at a maximum or minimum, which would correlate with a cosine or a negative cosine graph. Otherwise, we need to worry about horizontal shifts as well. In this example, the y-intercept occurs on the midline, or close enough. So we know we're dealing with a base sine function. Since the graph goes up and then down, we know that it's a positive sine function. The midline we just sketched in occurs at y equals negative 1. The amplitude is here is 2, since the maximum and minimum heights are 2 above and below our midline. Lastly, we need to identify the period. Our sign will go through a full cycle every 8 units. We can calculate, so our period is 8. We can calculate the b value that should go in the formula by doing 2 pi over 8, which reduces to pi over 4. So the formula for the reciprocal graph related to our graph can be related to our sine graph can be given by f of x equals 2 sine pi over 4 times x plus 1. The amplitude of 2 is multiplied in front, the b value affecting our period is pi over 4, and our midline represents a vertical shift of 1. The reciprocal of sine of x is cosecant of x, so this graph represents the formula f of x equals 2 cosecant of pi over 4 times x plus 1. In the next video, we'll look at how the graphs and characteristics of our final trigonometric function, the cotangent.